This travel guide to southern Thailand is about to begin in any second. However, if at any point during this video you're thinking to yourselves, man, this is great, but I want to know more. I want to know all of the hotels, all of the restaurants, all of the hidden gems, and I want Google map links for every single place that this guy went to in every single province, then fear not because linked below and in the comments, you'll find this ebook that I just wrote. It compiles every single hotel, restaurant, hidden gem, viewpoint, island, and lots of untold stories from my road trip around to every single province in Southern Thailand. Not only is it super valuable and super up to date, but it also helps support this channel and what we're doing in the future, trying to go to every single province in Thailand. Anyway, enough about the ebook. Enjoy the video, get your Google Maps ready and start saving all these places. And like I said, if if you want all of the places, then check out the ebook. Okay, let's go. So before we get into it, a quick disclaimer. I did go to every single province, except I didn't go to the island province of Phuket. <laughs> because at the time of filming and researching uh, this travel guide, um, it was kind of just impossible to get there. And the second disclaimer is, you know, every place that I'm mentioning in this video is my own opinion. Maybe when you go to these best places, you turn up and it's miserable, it's raining, or you're in a bad mood and you hate it. So I can't be held responsible if I think the, the place is amazing and you hate it. This is just my opinion. Um, but I've traveled quite a lot around Thailand for many, many years. And so nothing on this list is not there if it wasn't amazing or next level, as I like to say. So we're gonna to start today with the best destinations in Southern Thailand. So for each section of this video, I'm gonna break it down into a top five scenario. So the top five best destinations. Coming in at number five is the province of Krabi. Krabi is not a hidden gem. Everybody knows about Krabi because it's the home of Ao Nang, Rai Lei, Ko Phi Phi, and uh, many other islands actually. And uh, look, it is incredible. Just arriving at the airport or just driving around on a motorbike, you are gonna see limestone cliffs, you're gonna see amazing greenery, luscious beaches, white sands, turquoise waters, and uh, yes, yeah, some of the most incredible nature. I just think you cannot go to Southern Thailand unless you spend a good week or two exploring the province of Krabi, especially uh, I really like Riley and uh, obviously Koh Phi Phi, especially at the minute when there's not many tourists there. I had a private tour of Maya Bay and it was a life-changing experience. I've never had such a great time in my life than going to Maya Bay by myself. <laughs> Number four is a province that I had never heard of before I started traveling in the south and that is Patalung. This was a joy to travel every single second I enjoyed in Patalung. Basically on the, the left hand side, you've got a mountain range and they're full of waterfalls. And I had a really great time hanging out with the kids and swimming and just having fun, driving through the nature. The, the mountains in Patalung are amazing. The town itself of Patalung is really quaint. It's very Thai and it's got limestone cliffs and it's just a really nice atmosphere. It's very, very local, very, very laid back and uh, somewhere that I was thinking, man, I would love to retire in this town because it was just stunning. And you can look over to the mountains every sunset and it's just incredible. And the best part about Patalung is Tale Noi. It is an incredible lake with um, pink lotus flowers that open up in the mornings. It's home to wild buffalo that swim and live freely, live wild. And uh, it's just an incredible experience. But to be honest, the best part about Patalung for me was just driving around on my little Honda Dream just soaking up the views and just being absolutely mind blown the entire time. Number three, and this is a surprise to me, but might not be a surprise to you, it's Koh Samui. I had never been to Koh Samui before this trip because I'd always thought it was overrun, overcrowded. Uh, you know, I've seen the busyness of places like uh, Phi Phi and Riley, which are small. And I just assumed because Koh Samui was much bigger, much more famous, that it would be absolutely just kind of like overrun uh, and commercialized. But I actually found it to be incredible. The beach roads, the mountains, the temples on top of mountains, the incredible bays, beaches, the food. It's just 
it's really beautiful. <laughs> it's really, really beautiful. You have to go to Koh Samui. Don't write it off. It's my top three best destination in the whole of Southern Thailand for a reason. Go there, I promise you're gonna love it. Number two is a city. If you're thinking, yeah, look, I, I love beaches and everything, but I want a good city. I want to experience like a Bangkok vibe, uh, but a smaller version, you have to go to Hat Yai. Hat Yai is a city in the province of Songkla and it has everything. I call it the Chiang Mai of the South because it has mountains. It's got Thai, Malaysian, and Chinese influences, both in its um, you know buildings and infrastructure to its food and its culture. So it really is a melting pot. It's got lots of Western comforts. You can get really good fat yard fried chicken, delicious IPAs. There's also a big shopping malls there. So you can really get all your comforts. And 45 minutes away by motorbike is a beach. So you can drive in under an hour to the incredible beaches of Songkla and watch sunsets, watch the sunrise, go for a swim, go horseback riding, whatever you wanna do. So you can be in the city, then you can be up in the mountains, and then you can be at the beach, all available in Hat Yai but by far the best place, the best destination in Southern Thailand is Khao Sok National Park. It is, it just, I'm just speechless thinking about this place. It is a man-made reservoir. There used to be a big jungle and even some villagers living down there, but they flooded it all up to create a dam to supply the province of Suratani with power. And in doing so, created one of the most incredible wonders. It is just limestone cliffs, giant mountains sticking out and uh, this incredible blue and sometimes green colored water, especially in the mornings. And uh, you can stay on the lake, you can trek the lake, you can go inside caves. There's lots to do. It's not the most budget place in Southern Thailand. Um, you can do it cheaply, but uh, expect to pay if you're gonna be there for the day. Uh, you're looking at about 100 US dollars for activities and a tour and double that if you're looking to stay overnight on the lake and um, just go there and be prepared to do this the entire time. <laughs> That's literally what I was doing. I was like, I can't, I can't, I just can't. Everywhere I was looking, I was like, this is next level. Experiences. Now experiences really are the things that help build long lasting memories. When you're doing something, you sometimes learn something new, you see something in a different way and uh, you create, yeah, lifelong memories. So now we're gonna talk about the top five experiences that I personally thought were incredible in Southern Thailand, starting with surfing in Khao Lak. Kaolak is a beach area in the province of Pang Na. I didn't know that Thailand had surfing. There is surfing in Phuket, but like I said, I didn't go to Phuket. But Kaolak is really famous with, you know, like the high so Bangkok crowd. In fact, when I was in Kaolak, surfing season had just begun. The waves were getting quite small because the season was just building. But um, it's really nice to see everybody come down from Bangkok and other provinces. And, you know, these guys can surf. There's girls, there's guys, there's groups, there's young, there's old people. The beach is incredibly long incredibly beautiful the whole area of Kaolak actually is amazing and uh, I just really loved surfing in Thailand it was a real surprise and if you're into surfing and you want to surf in the Andaman Sea then go to Kaolak Muay Thai training Thai boxing is world famous and obviously you can do Muay Thai training anywhere Bangkok Chiang Mai Koh Samui I did mine in Kaolak actually right next to where you can surf and it was amazing it was called Rawai Muay Thai and I recommend them but you know as long as you find a good Muay Thai training camp with good reviews um, I recommend if you're looking to lose weight improve your health improve your mental health uh, make friends or learn to knock someone out uh, go to a Muay Thai training camp. By the way, they will not put you in a ring if you don't want to. If you just want to learn the technique and get fit, that's also completely okay. In fact, I saw many people in my training camp who were not interested in fighting, but wanted to lose weight, wanted to feel good, and learn a really good and amazing part of Thai culture. Experience a Muay Thai training camp for as little as a day or as long as a, a year. You can really maintain and change your Muay Thai training camp to your needs. So check out Muay Thai training. The third best experience in Southern Thailand for me, I've touched on it already, was Maya Bay on Koh Phi Phi. 
all know this place, it's famous because of the beach. However, look, if you're coming to Thailand in 2021 or 2022, when tourism is just opening and starting up, go straight there because you're never going to get a private tour or you know basically have the entire bay and other beaches in that area completely to your own. I'm talking there was one boat in the lagoon when I was there, a lady with her cat. When I went to Maya Bay itself, the only person there. Just looking at the footage of when Maya Bay was at its packed prime, you could see that you know it was overrated because you get somewhere beautiful and it's just overrun with boats and overrun with tourists. Go now, it is one of the most beautiful places in the world and it is one of the most popular places in Thailand for a reason. And now you have the opportunity to go there with hardly anybody there. Um, so as soon as you get to Thailand, get a boat and go to Maya Bay. It's amazing. The second best experience in Southern Thailand was dugon spotting. Dugons are like manatees. They're big gray cows. In fact, they're called sea cows. That's the nickname. They're a species of whale and they are massive, absolutely huge. And in the province of Trang, between the islands of Koh Li Bon, Koh Muk and Koh Kladang, there is a lot of seagrass and they feed on that and they breed there. And there is a small population of around 200 dugons that live there all year round and they're protected. You can't swim with them, you can't feed them, you can just observe them on a long tail boat. And um, I recommend that you just go speak to someone in the area on one of the islands and organize a private tour. I think I paid about 2000 bar or $60 for just me. We spent a couple of hours looking for them. It didn't take long to find some. Bring a drone. Uh, if you bring a drone, you can catch them and see them much easier because you just send it up and you can find them because they're quite big and you can see them a mile away. And then you can carefully go over and get a good look at them. And loads of turtles, but what an experience. Never forget that. Dugon spotting in the province of Trang. And the best experience in Southern Thailand is brrr, Khao Sok National Park. <laughs> Not only is Khao Sok the best place, but it's also the best experience because you can stay on the lake and I stayed, I think, in the most expensive resort called Panvori the Greenery. And I had a private room and it was on the lake. You wake up to sunrise, the sunsets are incredible, the cocktails, the food, the whole experience. They give you a kayaking tour, they give you a morning sunrise tour on the boat. And it's kind of like an all-inclusive thing, but just the general experience of hanging out with travelers, having cocktails, looking at the scenery, enjoying the nature, you know, it, and it was a rainy time when I was there and it just made it even more beautiful. So not only is it the best place, but staying on the lake is an experience that you will never forget for the rest of your life. So if you can afford it, stay on the lake for a night or two if you can. We're going to come on to foods and hidden gems in a minute, but for motorcyclists, people who are looking to drive a motorbike, big or small, remember I drive around on a Honda Dream, I've got a list of the top five best roads for you to drive on in southern Thailand. Driving from Patalung to Koh Lanta, that was a great day's drive. You leave Pang Na Town, again a beautiful place, you circumnavigate the mountains of Patalung and you get spat out into Trang and just the road was really nice. Actually I had to stop many times because of rain. But but um, I just loved every second of that drive. And the best part is when you get to Koh Lanta, you get on the uh, cargo ferry, the car ferry, motorbike ferry, whatever you want to call it. I think it costs like 70 baht. And you go over the final stretch of uh, distance over water and then you get onto Koh Lanta. And it's just a really relaxing, beautiful drive. Krabi to Pang Na Town. This is one of the most scenic roads you've ever seen. You're on a B road and then you'll go on the main highway. I think it's the number four and uh, it's quiet and it is incredibly beautiful. Everywhere you look, there are mad scenes. You can stop off at really nice cafes and restaurants that are on the bays along the way up there. And it's just one of those drives that you're just constantly like taking your time, soaking it in. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And the destination of Pang Na Town itself is a complete hidden gem. It is like a town surrounded by a bowl of mountains and it is unbelievable. So a great drive from Krabi to Pang Na Town. Takes about three or four hours. Mm -hmm. 
Chumpon to Hua Hin. This is a long one, it's 280 kilometers or 300 depending on the road you take. Don't take the number four highway unless you have to at the end. Stick to the coast. Whether you're going north or south, as long as the coast is right next to you, you're doing a good job. You'll go past dozens of incredible beaches, dozens of beautiful bays, and just pull over now and again, have a coffee, have a drink, go for a swim, eat some food. Just take your time, uh, set off early, otherwise you'll get there after dark, and just enjoy the incredible scenic road. I think it's called the 2021 Road and it was built by the king, commissioned by the king, I should say. An amazing road. But by far the best roads in Southern Thailand are in Beitong in the province of Yala. Yala was a complete surprise. I loved every single turn and twist of the roads in this province, but especially in the Beitong area on the border of Malaysia, deep south, as south as you can get actually. Some of the twists and turns, the mountain views overlooking the incredible Cameron Highlands in Malaysia and just into the mountains of Yala is, just unbelievable. I could not imagine there would be such high mountains in the south of Thailand. Blew my mind, I had incredible day on that road. In fact, I just drove up and down the same stretch of road for about three hours. I was just having so much fun in Beitong. So let's talk about food. Now, in the south of Thailand, it's famous for seafood. It's famous for Thai food. It's extremely spicy and delicious. And I ate in literally dozens and dozens of amazing restaurants and had hundreds and hundreds of amazing dishes. So here's the top five. Rice pizza in the province of Nakonsi Tamarat. I pulled up to this uh, place that was recommended to me by a local and it is in a farm and it's a little bit um, bohemian retro style. And the people who work there um, use and they're proud to use local ingredients from the province and they make pizza. However, the pizza dough is made from rice and it's incredibly crispy and delicious and the best part is um, they have locally made IPA beer as well so it's a great pairing so rice pizza with IPA made local in Nakhon Si Tamarat that's got to be on the list. Number four is Seoul. This is a restaurant. Every single dish on the menu is perfection. In fact the entire restaurant is the best restaurant in Thailand as far as I'm concerned. It is a hundred year old wooden building and run by a local family that I know personally very well and they recently moved there and have just flourished. Pizzas, Thai food, salads, cocktails, international beers, on the beach, upstairs there is an art gallery. Just, I didn't even film there because I was actually with Thai friends and it was just an incredible experience that I didn't want to spoil by getting the camera out. I took some pictures as you've seen here. Go to Seoul in the province of Chumpon and you will not regret it, I promise you. There's a noodle shop in Song Klao Old Town. It's written in Thai and I don't know what it's called, but my gosh, is it the best bowl of noodles I've ever had. Super cheap, super delicious. I literally am mouthwatering right now remembering it. She cooks it to perfection. And uh, if you're in Song Klao Old Town, which by the way is a beautiful little town. Again, the Google Maps for everywhere in this video, but especially this one, because it's written in Thai, is in the description. Save it in your phone go and eat noodles at this shop. Just for that reason, go to Songkla. Number two is sun-dried beef. When I was actually on a fishing trip in the province of Pang Na, we went out to the Silliman Islands. The Thai people prepared sun-dried beef as one of the dishes, and you can find it in Southern Thailand. It is like beef jerky, uh, but it's probably even more salty, actually. But it is just chewy, it is tender at the same time, it's rare because it's just sun dried and they put it in fishing nets and then they leave it out in the sun and the blazing heat and it's good to go the next day. And so if you ever see sun dried beef, that might sound a little bit dodgy to some of you, but it was incredible. I could not get enough. And the number one food, the number one dish that I had in Southern Thailand is, believe it or not, not Thai food, but a cheeseburger. <laughs> so when I was in the province of Nari Tiwat, which is in the deep south, um, I was invited by this lovely family to their restaurant. It's called Aku. And um, they do Malaysian style, Thai style breakfast food, but in dinner time, they do Western food. They do pizzas and burgers. And I had the most incredible double patty cheeseburger with fried cheese, melted cheese. It had all sorts of goodies in there. Guess how much it cost? The whole thing with fries was 89 baht, which is less than three US dollars. And not only was it completely handmade, 
and was it completely amazing, but it was incredibly cheap. The best meal I had on that trip, nothing better than a long day's drive and a big juicy double cheeseburger, and you just have to chuck away $3 for the privilege. Aku cheeseburger in Southern Thailand was my favorite dish. C crazy, but true. <laughs> for the best hotels in southern Thailand. Typically I stay in cheap guest houses, 500 baht a night, 15 US dollars a night. Somewhere cheap and clean, that will do me when I'm on this big long road trip. However, from time to time, I up my budget to 50 to 100, sometimes over 100 dollars per night, especially if I wanna make a video about it, right? especially because I want to give you information on some of the best places to go. And so let's talk about the best hotels. And number five is Mali Blue's Bed and Dinner. On the beach of Hat Tung Wulain in the province of Chumpon sits this really small but incredibly boutique hotel on the sand of the beach. It is to die for. They have incredible pizzas and German beers, wines, cocktails in a bar area and a restaurant but um, they only have three rooms. And so get on the booking, get on Airbnb and find it and book it up. It is one of the best locations, most incredible design, just an all round fantastic hotel in a fantastic beach, away from the crowds in a really local province of Chumpon. If you're looking for a party or you're just looking for a little bit more uh, life, then go to Blue Rama on the island of Koh Phangan in Suratani province. This island is famous, obviously, for the full moon party. However, this hotel is a little bit different. It's up on the hill. You'll need a good bike to get up there. But once you get to the um, resort, uh, you can get a private wooden bungalow with incredible views of the beach, the sea, and other mountains. And the best part is the restaurant, they have like a beach club with a small pool, infinity pool. They have a DJ playing music, like low tech, like house, uh, funky stuff. Um, not crazy loud, but enough to get people moving and get people dancing. They have incredible cocktails, a great menu, great staff, really delicious food as well. And some of the best sunsets I've ever had at Blue Rama Resort in Koh Phangan. Pawapi Resort on the island of Koh Mook comes in next. This island is incredible. It's basically like a fishing village, but it has like a spearhead beach uh, peninsula, which is just incredible. And Pawapi is on that beach peninsula and get the beachfront bungalow. You can get the bigger villas as well if you're a family, but uh, if you're a couple or a solo traveler, just treat yourself. It's about 100 US dollars a night and just the sunrise alone and just the quiet, idyllic paradise nature of this island and this resort was something I'll never forget. And that's also where I did the Dugon spotting. So best experience, one of the best experiences, one of the best hotels, one of the best islands in Southern Thailand. Combine that together and you'll have a great time at Pawapi Resort on Kumuk. The second best place I stayed isn't actually a hotel, but it was an Airbnb and it was basically your own house. It was a wooden, tiny blue house. It was a big living room slash bedroom uh, and a dining room. A really nice kitchen, fully equipped, and it had all the spices and condiments that you would need ready to go for cooking. Really good bathroom, uh, an amazing outdoor veranda, and it was in a little garden uh, where they were growing fruits and things, and it was right on Lamai Beach, away from all the noise, but right there. And, you know, park a new little motorbike outside your blue little house, and once you get moved in and you unpack, you will feel at home like that. The decor's really nice, and, um, you know, because of COVID and everything, I, was man I managed to get that house on Airbnb for a hundred US dollars for an entire week. And I'll never forget that little blue house. It was amazing. And the best hotel I stayed in Southern Thailand, can you guess where it is? Drum roll, brrrr. Khao Sok National Park. <laughs> um, I stayed at a place called Panvari, the greenery. I already mentioned it in this video, but that hotel, hands down, best experience, best hotel, best destination. You can see where I'm going with this. Khao Sok National Park. Um, but it's 300 to 400 plus dollars per night per person to stay there. Uh, negotiate with them if you can. To, directly contact them on Facebook or something and see if you can get a discount, see if you can cut corners somewhere, but it includes your transfer, it includes your lunch, your dinner, your breakfast, two like activities, and 
just the most divine resort in southern Thailand, in my opinion. Okay, the final part of this video is the best hidden gems in southern Thailand. These are places that, uh, except for number five, I had never heard of before this trip in the south. And uh, when I discovered them, I thought they were incredible. And I have to tell you about these hidden gems in southern Thailand. Number five is the beach of Hat Tung Walain in the province of Chum Pon. This is actually a place that I lived at for three years and I know very well. And I know that it's not on the traveler, the backpacker route. However, it is the best destination if you're looking for a real local Thai beach town with incredible food, beautiful sand, beautiful rainbows, and just amazing weather, especially in the afternoons when the Thai people come down to enjoy it and have barbecues and things. Go to the beach of Hat Tung Walain and and the neighboring village of Sapli. That's where the restaurant Seoul that I mentioned earlier is. An incredible hidden gem and one of the most amazing places in the whole of Thailand, not just the south. Now number four is a hidden gem in a place that we all know, but if you go up to the mountains of Koh Samui, you are in for a treat. Normally you'd stick to the beautiful bays, the beachside restaurants, the villas, and have all the beautiful Koh Samui life, okay? But if you get on a motorbike or in a car, but ideally on a motorbike, go up to the mountains. It is incredible. There are durian farms, mango farms, lychee farms, mangosteen farms, amazing temples with giant statues of the Buddha and pagodas with views of the entire island and neighboring islands of Koh Phangan. And you can even see Koh Tao from up there. And the air is fresh and the birds are flying and the butterflies are licking on all the fallen fruits. It is just an amazing surprise on Koh Samui, the mountains. Number three, this is a mountain called Dragon Crest Mountain in the province of Krabi, about a 20 minute drive from Ao Nang. Again, the description, the link is in the description. Uh, it is a free national park, you don't have to pay, and it takes about two hours to get to the top, and we'll just have a look at the views when you get up there. It is once in a lifetime, incredibly sweaty, incredibly beautiful, and one of the best and most unknown mountain treks in the south of Thailand. And everybody goes to, uh, what is it called, Tiger Temple? Don't go to Tiger Temple, it's just a staircase, a miserable steep staircase, and you'll just be dead at the top. This trek takes a lot slower, it's hard at the beginning, don't get me wrong, but then it flattens out for about an hour. It's not too bad, and the views, oh my god, the views. The second best hidden gem that I found on my trip was a haunted temple, or the Hell Temple, in the town of Pang Na, in the province of Pang Na, in the south. Basically, they depict hell, and they have all these horrible, scary statues of monsters uh, torturing people uh, who haven't lived a good life, and it's there to basically teach children to fear uh, what happens if you're naughty. And um, they have a monk uh, is literally meditating there and there's a big dragon's mouth and there's bats and if you go in and if you're brave enough you'll get into a cave. And uh, I went into the cave and I made it quite far before I got freaked out and screamed and turned around. Uh, but it is a really fun hour and a half and it is completely wild and weird and just amazingly Thai and just, yeah, if you're in the area and, you, and you're brave and you have a head torch, if you have a head torch I think you might make it to the end because uh, at the end you can actually get spat out and there's a viewpoint but I chickened out way before. But the haunted temple in Pang Na, go check it out. And the final hidden gem and uh, the people who told me about this place are going to hate me for telling you this um, but I think if you've made it to the end of the video you deserve this one. So. One morning I met a guy at 7-Eleven actually and he told me about this place. It's unknown, it's not on the tourist map, but it's in the province of Krabi. Now you might have heard of the Emerald Pool, which is basically a human man-made Emerald Pool basically, um, and it's a tourist trap. Uh, don't go there, go here. It's in the middle of nowhere, it's near a cave system, it's in the countryside. You'll only find it if you use the Google map link below. And um, take, swimming, take your swimming costume because when you get there, it's basically an entrance to a massive cave. And uh, it's, I think, 240 meters deep, uh, but it's filled with water and it's crystal clear, beautiful turquoise waters. And me and my friends had the most amazing time there. In fact, we went back again in the afternoon because we just loved it so much. The secret hidden 
cave pool thing in the province of Krabi near Ao Nang. Just an amazing place and literally paradise on earth. Loved it. For each category, this is just like a top five. The top five hotels, the top five restaurants, the top five locations. However, I visited dozens and dozens and dozens of places, hotels, restaurants, and places like that in the south of Thailand. So if you want a full travel guide, a Bible for Southern Thailand, then check out the ebook below. Download it onto your phone or your iPad. And then when you come to Southern Thailand, when you're in a province or heading to a new province, you can whip it out and refresh your mind and save even more places on your phone so that when you get to, let's say, Krabi, you know, all of the best restaurants, all of the best hotels, all of the best experiences, and uh, read some like untold stories about me and my time in those provinces as well. So yeah, check out the ebook below because it kind of goes with this video. This video is like a top five of each section, but the ebook itself is like a, a Bible of Southern Thailand information. And it's really up to date. Um, everything and everywhere that I went was between the month of March and July in 2021. So very up to date. Okay, thank you for watching my best of Southern Thailand. Again, look in the description. There are all of the Google map links to every location, every hotel, every restaurant that I mentioned in this video. There's also a link to the um, ebook of Southern Thailand if you want hundreds and hundreds more recommendations uh, every single hotel I stayed in with descriptions every single restaurant I ate in with descriptions all of the experiences all of the hidden gems these are just top five there are literally dozens in every single province that I uh, talk about in this ebook so um, if you're interested go check it out and thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back soon with the highlights of the next part of Thailand very shortly on next level adventures <laughs>